What is going on guys, this is Mia Sin and welcome to my updated Tenpai Dragon combo video and deck profile, this time featuring the new support, so we got a new Charmander, sorry, J Dragon Knight looking ass monster, they're all the same look, and uh, we also got a new Tenpai Dragon monster, as well as a new trap card, and I wanna say this deck is got, I mean, has gotten so much better going first, that you can almost choose to go first now when you win the dice roll, or when people force you to go first, you don't really care too much, you're not gonna be mad about it, so it's not like a go second OTQ or bus kind of deck, yeah, it's not a gimmick whatsoever if it goes first it's fine and if you go second <laughs> you're dying every single time and it's very consistent now you got way more one card starters uh, almost every single card in its engine allows you to one card otk your opponent it is kind of scary but yeah i will be showing you guys a bunch of combos on especially how to pilot this deck going first because i've always showed a bunch of one card otks in my previous combo video but yeah if this video can get to 1000 likes which i know we can I will, of course, be making a full spreadsheet on it, so it's pretty much a compilation of all of the combos going for a second through every single hand shop you can imagine. And yeah, with that being said, let's get right into it. Alright, so combo number one out of three, of course, I will be providing the deck profile at the end, so don't worry about it. So yeah, normal summon, Dora Draco, this is your Dragonite looking ass monster. And uh, on summon, on normal summon, sorry, it's even worse. Uh, you get to search your deck for any level 4 or lower far dragon monster from your deck to your hand. So that's not too bad. You get to search the new card right here, Tenpai Dragon of Genroku. Very interesting name, but yeah, it's whatever. I, I don't really care about their name, uh, just the yellow dude. And this card is... Uh, I I'm trying to compare it to like something that you guys probably know. It's kind of like a Snake Eye Populous, right? When you add it to your hand and then you special summon it. And on the field, it's a Lone Fire Blossom Quick Effect. So it's a Mirror Swords Knight. There we go. Yeah, every single card in Yu gives. Also, th there's always like those standard effects that you can always compare cards to other cards. But yeah, anyways, you summon that, and then you're gonna be synchro summoning into the Biden to Dragon, not a Biden, no, not a Joe. And then you revive back the Genroku, and then you go end phase. You set your Ojama Trio. Now you might be wondering, but Yak Sign, what is Ojama Trio doing in here? The answer is, do not worry, my child. And by the way, we are at 4 summons, so we are Nibiru proof. And on the end phase, we go effect in order to special summon the Baidora. And Baidora will very specifically set the new trap card, which is Sengen Kaihu. It reads, during the main phase, if all monsters you control are fire dragons, minimum one, and your opponent controls more monsters than you do, which is very easy to achieve with Ojama Trio, you can uh, end your opponent's main phase. So it's, it's kind of cute, you know? And if three or more attacks have been declared this turn, you can banish it from the grave, draw one card, and then you can special summon as many Tenpai Dragon monsters from your hand. I feel like this effect is not really relevant because if you're getting to the point where you're attacking three or more times in Tenpai Dragon, you're usually killing your opponent. So yeah, drawing one card, it doesn't change jack shit to my life. Anyways, on my opponent's turn, I can go Jama Tree on draw phase, standby phase, you know, play around uh, Lightning Storm, try to be as conservative as possible, even though that's not... Really a necessity, I could summon my monsters in defense, and then my opponent goes Lightning Storm, and then I chain Ojama Trio, and then chain my trap card. Or rather, actually, I, I can't do that. Yeah, never mind. So, yeah, using Ojama Trio now is actually a necessity. And yeah, my opponent now has more monsters than I do. And as soon as my opponent does something, because uh, he does have to pass priority, I can use my Kaihu, and then it ends the battle phase. Uh, sorry, the main phase, so my opponent is now in battle phase. And my opponent has a um, an action for turn player priority. And then I can uh, chain my uh, Tenpai Dragon Monster, by my, my, I think it's a Baidora. And then I can quick sync into the Tenset Transcend Dragon, Jesus, sorry. Whenever it is Synchro Summon, I change every monster by opponent controls to attack, and then they have to attack this card. Very similar to like the, the Ubel Nightmare Pain combo. And then my opponent can no longer activate cards or effects during the battle phase, which is very filthy. So yeah, my opponent has a bunch of monsters that are forced to attack me. Every single Ujama token monster has to die. And just like that, my opponent is dead. Merry Christmas, that's it for combo number one. Let's get into combo number two. Alright, so what can you do when you're going first and you got, uh, I don't know, let's say Genruku and two useless cards and then your opponent has like Droll, Nibiru, Fenrir, and then top decks to Dia Bellstar? It's not too bad. Uh, well, one card is basically an FTK through all of that. You know, Tenpai Dragon, you know, it doesn't suck going first now. So yeah, you're gonna be special summoning your Baidora and then search for the Kaiman. We are gonna be getting Drooled, but it's a quickly spell. It's a Salamangrate Circle, so we can just chain the circle and search for our Gazelle, or rather the, uh, I mean, they're, they're fire monsters, right? Zongdora, fire, uh, red dude. And that card is a special summon from hand, and then I can link off for Hieratic Seal. This is Nibiru proof, so I'm at uh, four summons exactly, if I if my maths are correct, yes. And then I'm gonna pass turn, even if I were to get nibbed here, uh, I think, cool story, bro. <laughs> I can just make another one anyways. But yeah, on my opponent's turn, my opponent can go uh, summon Fenrir, I don't really care too much, yeah, get your search. Nice deck, and then uh, trying to bait my Havoc Seal um, bounce back effect. 
I'm gonna go, okay, uh, sure, Hieratic Steel, bounce back the Fenrir to your hand. My opponent feels like he's not really losing too much here, but it's gonna hurt a lot, because now I can special summon that Fedora, revive back the Zongdora, and then Quick Sync into what? Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. This card is honestly really good, and in this situation, it is the best card I could go into. So you're gonna see something very interesting here. So first of all, I'm at like three summons, I believe, so I'm also Nibiru-proof on my opponent's turn. And then my opponent on main phase 2 will summon the Fenrir again, and then summon Diabell Star, use its effect. I can negate the Clear Wing, uh, sorry, the Diabell Star with Clear Wing, uh, because it's a level 5 or higher monster that's trying to activate its effect on the field, very specifically, so it can't negate Nibiru. And then my opponent will try to go Fenrir Effect Banish, and because of the fact that my opponent is using a monster effect to target a level 5 or higher monster on the field, I can also negate that and then destroy it. So yeah, it has two effects that can negate my opponent. That's not too bad. And then I'm not really in top deck mode because I can draw like literally anything here and win. I can draw like a freaking level 3 hat shop and then go into Baron, destroy, and then next turn I can also revive back my Tenpai Dragon monsters. I can do whatever the hell I want. I only needed one freaking Tenpai Dragon to do all of that. And it was also like not vulnerable to any hand shop. I just feel really safe and it's actually pretty oppressive. You know, it's Hieratic Seal into Clear Wing, which can negate a bunch of times. It's not too bad. I'm a big fan. But anyways, let's get into combo number three now. Alrighty, so as you can see here, my opponent has a Dora Draco on the field and then D-Bearer set with a Fire Monster in Grave. And I've got Dora Draco myself as well as Lightning Storm. And you might be thinking, can this deck kill under D-Bearer calling Synchro? And the answer is, of course, yes. You just have to play correctly. But yeah, I will start by, and obviously be skillful in the game and draw the perfect combination of cards. But yeah, Lightning Storm destroy that D-Bearer preemptively because if that D-Bearer is flipped while we play, it's gonna hurt us like crazy. Like, you can't play through a D-Bearer calling Synchro if you have Synchro monsters on the field. And if you're already in battle phase, you have to do things like, uh, like you know, again, beforehand. But yeah, I will now normal summon my Dora Draco and then get uh, my search for the uh, Gen Genroku, I was gonna say Sengoku. And then I will be using the effect of Dora Draco, which might come up like once every 75 years. And oh wow, what a coincidence, I mailed by Dora, which will be relevant later on. And by later on, I mean like literally in 7 seconds. So yeah, link off into Hita and then revive back my opponent's um, Genroku. I could use the effect like a moron in order to summon Fadora and then revive back a monster and then I can't do anything because this card freaking locks me under dra uh, dragon monsters for the rest of the turn, which I am not uh, down for. I'm not trying to be locked. So yeah, now I'll be going to Princess, so obviously I think you can understand what I'm try trying to not be locked. And at this point, whether my um, Dora Draco mailed or rather excavated by Dora or Fadora doesn't really matter too much as long as it's one of the two because I can use its effect and then get my search for Kaiman, and then Kaiman can get my search for Zangdora, and then I can special summon that, and then link off Zangdora and Princess for Raging Phoenix, and then Zelantis, and I think you've seen this in the Snake Eye deck, but yeah, this is one of the few decks that can do that, that is not a Snake Eye deck, or Fire King, not bad, all of your monsters are fire, so, <laughs> Princess Synergy, hey, what can I say, you know, it's, Konami thinks about everything, not only, it's not just the Sinful Spools decks that can play, uh, you know, with uh, Princess and everything, so yeah, that's pretty cute. Alrighty, so for the deck profile now, before we proceed though, again, friendly reminder to smash the like and subscribe button, there you go, you're the best. But yeah, as you can clearly see, I am playing 12 to 13 hand shops. I mean, the, the Bistool Magna mode, I don't really see it as a hand shop. The reason why it's there is because you can special summon that off of a Heretic Seal, and then this card is either a follow for next turn by searching whatever you want, or you can recycle back that Fedora so you always have a really good grind game. So even if you're only playing one Fedora, it's fine. You don't really need any more than that. So yeah, you won't really only need one Magnemote as well. If you draw it, then it's insane. If you draw it as a hand shop as well, and you use it on your opponent's first turn, it feels so unfair because now you're searching a one-card OTK, but that's not the real reason why it's there. And uh, the other Bestial Monsters are honestly just not good enough, so I don't really recommend them anymore. I used to play them, but now I cut them in favor of Forbidden Droplet. But yeah, for the hand shops, I'm on three Ogre. Ogre is actually a decent hand shop next format. Not at the current moment, but once we get Legacy of Destruction, there are a lot of cards that lose to Ogre. Uh, Br Brimming Sengen Manor is one of them, because it's not like Union Hangar, it's rather like a Draconic Diagram. So you activate it, and then nothing happens, and then once it resolves, you have to activate the effect again to search. And then Ogre can hit it, so that's that's pretty nice. And obviously it is a hard once per turn. So if you Ogre that, then they can't go for another Sengen Manor. And you can also Ogre the Nightmare Pain against Ubel. You can Ogre... I don't know, a few cards, so who cares? What, whatever, the, the card's not too bad. Oh, also the Flunderese Field Spell. There's also, like, other targets for this card, but it's it's pretty nice. Uh, 3 Ash obviously makes sense, 3 Valor, 3 Imperm. 
Uh, so I want to say these are the 12 safest hand traps. Nibiru actually completely sucks. Uh, next format, not a lot of decks lose to Nibiru anyways. And you could main deck shifter in this deck, but I don't really recommend it because most decks I feel can beat shifter. Like if people start playing like Flunderies or Yubel or Tenpai Dragon, you're not going to go far because this deck can OTK under shifter. It can play shifter itself, so you can side it, but main deck it, it depends on the, the format. And yeah, for the other non-engine, of course, three Forbidden Droplet. I actually think this card's insane in this deck because sometimes you just need a push through like one negate in order to kill your opponent. And hand shafts don't necessarily get you there on their own, but Forbidden Droplet can fix a lot of your issues. Like it can make you dodge Veiler Imperium on some of your monsters. Uh, it can negate like a, a, I don't know, like a Baron that your engine doesn't necessarily get to, to break. Uh, it's just a good card overall, so I really like it in this deck. And Dark Ruler doesn't make sense because then you can't inflict damage to your opponent, which defeats the purpose of playing a Go Second OTK deck. And then, of course, the Duster, as well as Double Lightning Storm. Six Board Breakers that you can easily excavate with Proud of Prosperity. And again, Prosperity in this deck is tier zero, like completely unfair, because it is way too free. You don't care about your extra deck. You can easily banish all your Link monsters going second, because, you know, unless you're getting debarriered, you're not really going into Hita, Princess, Raging Phoenix, and Zelantis. You're only really going to your synchros, and halving the damage is completely irrelevant because when you are killing your opponent, you're going for 37,400 damage. There, I'm, I'm just such a chat. I know the freaking numbers by heart. Yeah, you can divide 37k by 2, and <laughs> wow, what a coincidence. It's still game. As a matter of fact, you can divide it by 4 and you're still dead, especially thanks to Trident Dragion. Get that card now before it's too late. Actually, it's already too late now. But yeah, 3D 10 by Dragon Monsters, you can definitely mess around with the ratios, but 3 by Dora, it could also be 2 by Dora. There's just so many one-card starters, like Genroku, you could be on 1 Genroku or 2, doesn't really matter too much. And then Dora Draco, 2, 3, 1, whatever you want. Uh, it's just a lot of normal summons though, that's my only issue, and usually you're not trying to go over 3 normal summons in your deck, or... Rather, three cards that can only really be normal summoned. So if your hand has a bunch of Baidora, Genroku, and or a Draco, you're not doing anything. You have one layer of play. You go normal summon effect, and then you get stopped, and then you pass. Whereas cards like Zongdora are extenders in your hand. And then Fadora is just like, it's just, it's just like the handicapped kid. It doesn't do anything. Like, it stays in your hand, and it doesn't absolutely nothing. It is the brick, like my grandmother always said. But actually, if you, if you have Kaimin then you can do some nice things, you know? Like, you can special, like you can search something like Genroku and then special summon the Fadora because you do not have to necessarily special summon the monster that you search. So that's pretty cool. It's the uh, only way to make Fadora really insane when you draw it, honestly. Uh, but yeah, the, these are my ratios. Again, you are more than welcome to uh, change whatever you want. Uh, but the cards that you absolutely have to play a three are the three manners, three Kaimen, three Prosperity, obviously, and the Terraforming. Uh, these ratios, I want to say, are set in stone for the most part. For the extra deck, uh, you might want to change a few cards depending on the situation, but I really like one Transcend Dragon with the Trident Dragon, obviously, for the OTK, and then two Biden Dragons, so the first one you can even summon turn one when you're going first, and the second one when you're OTKing, or when it gets to a grind game, this card being a two of in your extra deck is definitely really nice. You can revive back the Fedora and just keep playing from there. And then we got Black Rose Dragon. You can either quick sync into this card on your opponent's battle phase using... Zongdora as well as Baidora or Genroku or Fadora, whatever. Uh, or you can summon this card off of Ruddy Rose Dragon because Ruddy Rose is kind of like a weird crossover between Black Rose and Stardust Dragon, and it has another effect that where your opponent, when your opponent activates a card or effect that would destroy a card on the field, you, oh, rather any card, you contribute it and then negate the activation and then special summon the Black Rose from your extra deck or grave. And then that Black Rose doesn't do anything because its uh, pop effect is only on Synchro Summoned. And also, it is an optional when effect, so it misses timing. Make sure that you summon this card in Chainlink 1 in order to not make it miss timing. On the other hand, Black Rose Moonlight Dragon never misses timing, but it is a mandatory effect. So it's a, it's a good card that you can summon in order to break boards and also be an interruption for next turn. And again, these cards are dragons, so they have nice synergy in this deck, which I like a lot. And then Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, this card is Exodia in the mirror match because everything happens during the battle phase. So if you're just shutting down every effect during the battle phase because this is what this card does, it's a little unfair. So yeah, you can summon this in Voices Voice as well using the Odd Eyes Pendulum Grab Dragon, the Ritual Monster. It, all it does, all it has to do is negate a spell and then you win the game. Anyways, the Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, very good card as I've showcased. Uh, I think more people should be playing this card. It is remarkable, and it fixes a lot of issues for this deck while still being a dragon. So even under the lock of, again, Roku, you can still summon it. 
or you can climb using it and Genroku in order to go into the Tragia, uh, Tri Trascend Dragon. Yeah, there we go. And for the level 10 monsters, Ruddy Rose as well as Baron de Fleur, you could also be playing Bestial Despowder, but it's really hard to use this effect to summon back a monster from the Banish because you don't really play any light and darks or you don't really have any ways of banishing anything. Like Magnum Mode is the only card really or Ruddy Rose, but it's just too gimmicky. So yeah, I think Baron, even though you're probably never going to summon this card, might come up a little more often. Again, if you got like a level 7 monster, you can normal summon one of these hat shops or even Ghost Mourner. And then you can synchro summon that and it's just really good in a simplified game state. Uh, for the Link monsters, the one Heretic Seal, you can also play two if you want a better grind game. As well as, again, the OTK package when you are under d bear recalling synchros. Preemptively, again, if your opponent is smart and has d bear and you don't have Duster Lightning Storm, you shouldn't do it when you got two monsters on the field and you can synchro summon. You should rather hold it for when you're trying to commit. But yeah, uh, that's it for the main and extra deck. For the side deck, three shifter, I think this is insane in this deck because, again, you can un uh, OTK under it. And then triple tactic thrust when you are first to go first or when you want to go... Uh, First with it, or even for going second, I mean, this, this card is always good when you can fetch cards like Duster, Lightning Storm, uh, and Triple Tactic Talon, but I don't really like this card too much in this deck. Uh, three Cosmic, I don't think you need this, honestly, when you're on double Lightning Storm and Duster. Uh, three D Bearer, of course, right? Rivalry for uh, Dragons, because your deck doesn't uh, lose to, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, you lose to there can only be one, though. And then uh, the Sengen Sai Kai, who I don't really think this card's too good. It gets a lot of hype, but I actually think it's uh, overrated. And finally, two uh, extra options for the extra deck if you really want to. Samurai Destroyer, really good card. Another card that I think is uh, pretty nice is Cyrus Quantum Dragon. Both of these cards share a common uh, trait of being really nice against Ubel because Ubel monsters are indestructible by battle and also they make you take damage, which is, you know, really annoying to deal with. So Samurai Destroyer, when it attacks, or ra rather when it battles, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step, and also the, the effect of the monster that you're battling is negated during the battle phase. Uh, so that's actually really nice at dealing with monsters that are undestructible and also float. So this is all you really need to beat Yubel in a way, but you're still taking the damage. Yeah, I know the good old anime meme. And it's not a dragon, so sometimes you can't really do anything with it. Like, you're... My issue is that you're only really synchro summoning this, and then that's it. You're doing nothing else, so I don't even know if it's like a necessarily a winning option. Whereas cards like Bra Black Rose Moonlight, I actually think are a little more realistic because you're bouncing back the Ubel, and then next turn your opponent summons another Ubel, and you're bouncing it back again. So it has double value. Whereas this, I mean, you only really get the value once when you're battling, and that's it. And also, its graveyard effect to float into a machine doesn't matter because you're playing zero machines in your deck. And the last card is Typhon. It's not a dragon monster, and it's... I mean, it, it doesn't really let you do anything extra in this deck. So, yeah, it's... I mean, it's up to you if you want to play it. But, I mean, you can easily cut some, some cards in the extra deck like Baron or Ruddy Rose or not really Moonlight. Yeah, not really. And the OTK package, I mean, it really depends if people are on a D bearer or not. But, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.